Welcome to the FAA's webinar series on airspace for UAS operators. My name is Kevin Morris. I'm an aviation safety inspector with the Federal Aviation Administration and also a subject matter expert on drone operations. Today's webinar is divided into two segments. The first will be a presentation on airspace and why it's important to drone operators. And the second will provide an opportunity to have your questions answered live on the air. Today I'm joined by a team of FAA subject matter experts who are ready to take your questions throughout the webinar. To ask a question, simply enter it into the Q&A pod at the bottom of your screen. If we're unable to answer your question during today's webinar, don't worry. We will answer all questions submitted and post them to our website at a later date. So let's begin. What we want you to understand today is primarily why the FAA regulates airspace, the different classifications of airspace, and maybe most importantly, when an authorization for airspace is needed. Many UAS operators are unaware that the sky is full of aircraft other than commercial airliners. When you fly your drone, you're sharing the airspace with corporate jets, helicopters, commercial airliners, and thousands of private aircraft operating from any one of the United States 5,000 plus airports. In addition to these aircraft, many parts of the country have extensive military operations which include low level and high speed flying. So the potential for aircraft collision is not as remote as one might think. Every day, the FAA receives reports from pilots of manned aircraft where they observed a drone that was either too close, too high, or operating in an area that created an unnecessary increase in risk. If you're new to the drone community, it's easy to think that you will be able to see and avoid airplanes in your area. However, it's possible to misjudge the altitude you are flying and the other aircraft are flying, and you may not see it until it's too late to react. Crop dusters, emergency medical aircraft, and patrol aircraft all routinely operate at altitudes less than 500 feet above ground level. Now most drone flying is limited to 400 feet above ground level. And many people have wondered why the FAA selected 400 feet as the maximum altitude for flying your drone. The FAA received considerable input from industry organizations and private individuals regarding this topic prior to the final rule being published under part 107. And 400 feet is a bit of a sweet spot. It allows for the majority of UAS operations to be conducted while still providing a margin of safety for most manned aircraft operations which occur above 500 feet. To help decrease the risk of aircraft conflicting with one another, the FAA has segregated airspace into different categories. The most important ones for drone operators to be aware of are controlled, uncontrolled, special use, and temporary flight restrictions. Two of the most misunderstood terms regarding airspace are controlled and uncontrolled. Both are generic terms the FAA uses to describe certain responsibilities and services provided by air traffic control. But more on this in a bit. First, let's take a look at air traffic control's role. Air traffic control's primary purpose is to prevent collisions between aircraft and organizing and expediting their flight. The requirement to get an authorization to fly your drone in controlled airspace provides ATC visibility into your planned flight. In order to fulfill their role, air traffic control must be aware of all aircraft operating their airspace at all times. It's important to note that based on higher priority duties or other circumstances, authorization from air traffic control may not always be granted. And this is true for both unmanned and manned aircraft. Airspace in which air traffic control services are provided, such as authorizing takeoffs and landings, route clearances, is called controlled airspace. All pilots, including drone operators, need to be aware of how the FAA has segmented controlled airspace. These segments are known as classes of airspace, and there are five, class alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo. And generally speaking, 
you must receive authorization from air traffic control before flying in controlled airspace. Although Class Echo does have some nuances, which we will cover in an upcoming episode. Before you fly, it's important to know what requirements you, as a drone pilot, are required to meet. Remember, the National Airspace System is the safest airspace in the world, and safely integrating drones requires that you understand and comply with the rules. If you plan to fly in controlled airspace, you generally must have approval from the FAA before doing so. This is known as an airspace authorization. Airspace authorizations can only be issued by air traffic control through an approved Lance service supplier or the drone's own web portal. If you're wondering why you need an authorization to operate in controlled airspace, consider this. Every time you fly on a commercial airliner, the pilot has to request permission to fly the route they have planned. This is to ensure there are no hazards or other planes in its flight path that could cause a conflict. And it's the same with drones. Air traffic control needs to have an understanding of what aircraft are operating in its controlled airspace to maintain the ability to separate all aircraft. This is all part of the FAA's mission to fully integrate drones into the national airspace system. Safe integration requires that we work together to ensure that we continue to have the safest airspace system in the world. Uncontrolled airspace, otherwise known as Class Golf, is any airspace outside of Class A, B, C, D, or E. We use the term uncontrolled because from an air traffic control standpoint, they are not responsible for separating aircraft in those areas. However, people tend to think uncontrolled means something like a free-for-all, and it's quite the opposite. There are still rules and regulations which apply to all aircraft, both manned and unmanned, operating in this airspace. And it's these rules and regulations that ensure aircraft do not conflict with each other. Class Golf airspace typically begins at the surface and extends upward to the next airspace layer, which varies depending on where you are operating. That next airspace layer is normally Class Echo. And because Class Echo begins at different altitudes depending on air traffic control's needs, it's important to know where you are flying and what airspace is above you. For operations in uncontrolled airspace, air traffic control authorization is not needed. However, as I just mentioned a bit ago, there are still rules and regulations for operating in this class of airspace. Regardless of which airspace you intend to fly in, it's your responsibility as the pilot to ensure that you are aware of any airspace restrictions in your operational area. Temporary flight restrictions may have been issued for the location or the time that you want to fly. You can find them in the FAA TFR database. If you're unsure what we mean by this, tune in to our next webinar. We will be discussing notices to airmen, temporary flight restrictions, and other airspace restrictions on April 18th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, as always, you can find additional webinar information and resources on our website at faa.gov forward slash go forward slash drone webinar. So this concludes our first segment. Please continue to submit your questions to our team of subject matter experts as they will be taking them through this short break. We're going to take this short break and then we're going to set up Adobe Connect to allow us to answer your questions on the air that you've been submitting up to this point. So please don't go anywhere. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we'll start off our second segment here on our webinar episode today on airspace and why it's important for drone operators. This segment's where we'll take your questions that you've been submitting and we can answer some of them live on the air. If you do have a question that you'd like to have read live on the air, uh, please enter it into the Q&A pod at the bottom of your screen with the word live, L-I-V-E, in front of that question. That question will then be routed through our subject matter experts who can get me the question and I'll be able to read and answer it on the air. So right now, if you do have a question, the queue is open. We have nobody in line for questions. If you want, go ahead and submit your question to the subject matter experts and they'll reroute it to me. 
Otherwise, if we don't have any questions, we can wrap up a little bit early here. Uh, just a reminder, our next episode will be this Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, where we'll continue to talk about airspace restrictions. And this time it will be temporary flight restrictions, notums or notices to airmen, and other airspace restrictions. So we'll stay open here for business just a few minutes longer to see if we have any questions that come in. Uh, there's quite a few of you online, so it may be difficult right now for our production team to route those questions to me, which is why I'm waiting just a little bit here to see if we can get some of the questions. And just a reminder on the screen there, put the word live in front of your question and we can get that answered uh, live on the air. I do know we have quite a few attendees on, uh, so if there's got to be some folks out there that would have, like to have their question asked and read live on the air. I promise not to call out your name. I'll just simply read the question and provide an answer. So if you're a little bit shy, don't worry. I won't be reading your name. Uh, just go ahead and type the question into the Q&A pod down there, and we'll get it answered on the air. Wait just about another minute here to see if we can get any questions submitted live. Uh, if not, we'll wrap up a little bit early for today. Keep in mind that during the webinar, you're allowed to ask any question that you have. Uh, while we certainly have subject matter experts on from air traffic control, uh, we have other folks on from flight standards uh, involved with airman certification. We have folks on from the legal department. Uh, we have folks on from the testing. So we have a large group of subject matter experts. So even if your question isn't necessarily airspace specific, please feel free to go and type that question in there because we do have folks that can help you out with that uh, topic as well, even if it's not let's say airspace related. Okay, it's, just, it's appearing rather quiet here today. Um, looks like we do have one question that just came in here. I'll ask that real quick. The question is, are hobby pilots, so non part 107 pilots, able to fly and control airspace or is that limited to part 107? Oh, there's a lot of changes going on right now when it comes to hobby operations. And one of the requirements that Congress put forth in a law was to establish a process for recreational flyers to obtain airspace authorizations. And the FAA is working on that diligently right now. We have a number of groups and a number of very, very intelligent people working on the process to, in order for the recreational flyers to get that airspace authorization. Uh, but in the end, the recreational flyers will have the same airspace authorization requirements as the Part 107 flyers. So that, that's a good question. I appreciate that. So we have another question here that's coming in. Is there an easy way to keep track of airspace restrictions between the cities and states and FAA? Uh, good question. Uh, this, this topic comes up quite a bit uh, regards to FAA airspace rules or in some rules that the cities are enacting, um, the FAA has the responsibility and authority to regulate the airspace. So the FAA rules in the airspace realm are the controlling rules. Uh, when we start getting into local cities and ordinances uh, and or bylaws and that such, it's important to remember that cities have every right to regulate the activity that's occurring on the ground. Uh, and they can limit takeoffs and landings at certain spots but when we talk about flying in the air, airspace is under the FAA's jurisdiction and the FAA's rules would apply once you're in the air. But again, it's always best to check with your local state and city governments and open a dialogue to find out what rules they may have in place for drone flying within their city limits so that everybody can be on the same page and we can all move forward as a group. So that, that's a good question. I'm just checking to see if we have any more questions that are coming in. It looks like one might just be coming in here. We'll see if we can get that question in before we wrap up here for today. I 
Yeah, it looks like we don't have any more questions coming in. So I think what we're going to do here right now is we're going to keep the Adobe Connect room open uh, in case those of you that, that still are typing your questions in or, or still have a question you want to ask. We'll keep this room open here for about another uh, 13 minutes until about 4.30 uh, Eastern time. That will provide you with the opportunity to continue to type in your questions uh, that you want answers to. And remember, if you typed in a question within the first couple of minutes and we haven't gotten a response to you yet, it could be for a couple of reasons. One, it could be that because we just haven't been able to get to that question in the way that Adobe orders them. Or two, it might be a great question that requires additional research. And so we want you folks to understand that just because we don't have an answer for that question you submitted today doesn't mean that we're ignoring the question. Far from it. In fact, we will provide answers to every question like I mentioned and we will post those on our website so that everybody can review the questions asked during the webinar. So I think what we'll do is we'll wrap up here for today, at least the, uh, the webinar portion of it. As I mentioned, I'll keep the room open and uh, keep putting in those questions so we can get the answers to you folks. We really want you folks to use this opportunity to have a direct access to FAA subject matter experts with your questions. So on behalf of the Federal Aviation Administration, I appreciate that you're joining us for today and I look forward to seeing you on our next webinar as we continue through our series on airspace for UAS operators. Until the next time, fly safe.